Hello everyone. Uh, I'm in video making mode here, so we're going to try to make one now. And it's going to be another Stephen King one. <laughs> Still continuing the Stephen King reading project that has not abated during the um, corona pandemic and the overtime work schedule. I've still been plugging away at that, um, alternating other books in between two. But the two that I have here to show you are, of course, Stephen King books. Um, that's the reason why it's called the Stephen King Reading Project, right? Duh. <laughs> um, this first one was the last book because um, I'd been alternating between reading um, King books that I hadn't read or hadn't gotten around to the first time when they were released with revisiting well-known books of his that I loved. So, Full Dark No Stars was the last book of King's that I had not read. So, um, I bought this, of course, when it came out new, which I think was 2010, 2010. So this book's already 10 years old. Wow. And uh, I read the first story, which was 1922. And it was fine. You know, it was a very dark story. But I'd gotten to the second story, which was called Big Driver. And it kind of turned me off, kind of put me off the book. So I ended up setting it aside. And 10 years later, <laughs> I picked it back up. Um, I started the story over from the beginning. I didn't reread 1922. I remember that one still pretty well, but I started Big Driver over again. Um, I should explain. This is a collection of novellas. There's four novellas in this book, which is something that King seems to do like every 10 years or so, because his current book, which is called If It Bleeds, is the same thing. It's a collection of, well, like f one really long novella. The title story and then the other three are on the shorter side but i guess you could still call them novellas so like i said he seems to do this you know every 10 years or so give or take and um so i i restarted big driver from the beginning and i ended up liking it a lot more than i did the first time a lot more um the rape scene isn't that much fun but once i got past that and I got to where she had started to recover from that and figure out what she was going to do about it, um, that the story really took off. So, and actually, I, I, to be honest, I couldn't put it down. So here's the back cover. Here's the man, circa 2010, the master. Um, <clears throat> but I ended up liking it, like I said, a lot more than I did before. And, um, I finished this book in pretty pretty short order. It, uh, to be honest, it, it grabbed me like a lot of you know King books usually do, and um, I'm gonna try not to spoil too much about the stories. Um, but Big Driver is a revenge story, you know, to put it bluntly, and you can kind of take it from there and figure it out. Um, the third story is called Fair Extension. If I'm, if I remember right, yes, fair extension, which is a, it's a king twist on a deal with the devil. So, trying to stay spoiler spoiler free, even though it's a ten year old book, you know. Um, but yeah, that was, you know, it was uh, it was King's take on uh, a deal with the devil. I'll just leave it at that. The last story <clears throat> I liked probably, mm, I don't know if I liked it the best of all, probably probably equal with like Big Driver. It's called A Good Marriage. Now, again, not to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it, but just imagine if you were married or in a committed relationship with someone and you ended up finding out some evidence, some hidden evidence that they were a killer, maybe a serial killer. That really made this a chilling story. 
<laughs> and you can imagine being Stephen King, what he's going to do with that idea. So, um, I really ended up liking this book a lot. Um, 10 years ago, I probably just wasn't in the right frame of mind to read it. I guess some books are like that, even some Stephen King books, but, uh, revisiting it, like I said, was, uh, turned out to be very enjoyable. And I, uh, really like this collection and I think it stands tall with, you know, some of his earlier works like uh, different seasons or even four past midnight, or even if it bleeds, that was another good one. It seems like for as many doorstop sized books as King has written, you know, these thousand plus page opuses, I think a lot of his favorites, my favorite stuff of his are on the shorter side. So, um, he's able to do it. He's able to do both. Very well, obviously. So, Full Dark No Stars gets a big thumbs up from me. And if you haven't read it, or haven't gotten around to reading it yet, and you want something a little shorter, you know, from King, this would be a good choice. Not really supernatural horror. It's more psychological. Um, you know, there's really no monsters in it, but... Really, the, the scarier monsters are people <laughs> most of the time. So, um, yeah, this this was a this was a great book. I really liked it, and that helped uh, me get to the end of reading everything. I've read all of King's stuff, all of his. We'll put it this way: all of everything that's been released. I think there's some unpublished stuff on his website, like the. Um, I think uh, I just saw a video that Fuego put out about the uh, the cannibals, which was um, King's first attempt at writing uh, what eventually became the Under the Dome novel. So haven't read that, but <clears throat> everything that's been officially released, whether as a novel, nonfiction, short story collection, novella collection, I've got and I've read. So it felt good to finally achieve that. I know some people, some people like on the Stephen King uh, Facebook group, Hail to Stephen King, are reading, are doing like what Fuego did, and uh, are reading all of King's books in published order, which, that would be daunting. So, Godspeed to them. <laughs> so, from there, I, I went back to the other side of the King project and revisited a book that I ha had read before when it came out, had it in paperback the first time, um, picked it up as a hardcover just to have it as a hardcover. And this was um, a book written under the Richard Bachman pseudonym called Thinner. And it was really with this book that the... Uh, the cat was out of the bag as far as the uh, identity of Richard Bachman, and this is a this is a first edition copy, and it still has the uh, the fake photo of uh, Richard Bachman. I think this is actually King's agent, if I remember right. I think I remember reading something about this, but um, yeah, it, the paperback that I had, you know, in big letters on the cover, it said Stephen King, and then writing as Richard Bachman in little little print on the at the bottom <laughs> to really help sell the book but uh, this book doesn't really need no help it's it's a uh, you know it's a nasty little tale about uh, well it's about a, a lawyer who was getting a handy from his wife while he was driving and he ends up accidentally running over a gypsy woman <laughs> goes to trial and he ends up getting off because he knew the judge and as he's walking out of the courtroom you know down the steps outside at this this very old very um, scarred he had like no nose like his nose was just like a wreck gypsy man comes up to him and just touches his cheek and says thinner and when you know it, as every day goes on, he starts losing weight. 
at first it's a good thing because this lawyer, his name was um, Billy Halleck, character's name, was overweight. So, you know, take away a couple of pounds a day. He doesn't really start to notice it until, you know, a week or two later when his pants start getting looser and doesn't change his eating or anything like that and he still keeps on losing weight. And it just keeps going and going and going until he finally is like, I got a problem. And he's trying to find the the gypsy because that's the only thing that he knows that could have caused this. No doctor can explain it, why he keeps losing weight. And he gets to the point where he's, you know, literally down to skin and bones. And um, this book is really kind of bonkers at the end because um, he, uh, <laughs> he has a friend, or, or a, someone that he represented who was, you know, of the criminal nature track this these this gypsy down you know with his family they, they travel around you know in kind of like a traveling circus type of thing and uh he ends up uh forcing this gypsy guy to take the curse off of him so the ending of the book which i'm probably i'm not going to tell you the ending but it's uh kind of a nasty almost like an ec horror comics type of twist ending it's really uh it's really twisted <laughs> so uh if you've never read this before it's a shorter novel it's like 300 some pages i think yeah just over 300 pages so for king you know this is almost just a novella but um this was an enjoyable little read called thinner and you can tell you know when you start reading it you know it's king even though it says Richard Bachman. And I'm sure even before um, somebody looked up the copyright and saw his name on it, people probably knew that this was very King-ish in the writing style. You know, he's got a very specific writing style, so it's pretty hard not to miss it. So, uh, yeah, this was a uh, the other book of his that I'd read. And now that I've completed all of the new King um, books, I'm now alternating them with Joe Hill. So right now I started his short story collection called 20th Century Ghosts. I just started reading that the other day. I took a little break from King for a while. I, I read a book that I, I mentioned in my last video about Alligator Records called Bitten by the Blues. And then I also read this book about um, the making of Blonde on Blonde, which was a Bob Dylan album. It was called That Thin, High Mercury Sound, and it just came out last year. Both of those books were gifts for my wife. She surprised me with them. So I took a little mini break from King just to kind of, you know, read something else for a little while, and now I'm back to the project. So as you can see on the shelf behind me, see right there is the, the glass that Beth gave me from B-Side Records. It's a... Uh, it's a glass that has uh, Pennywise on it. She gave that to me as a gift. And then you got those books there. You can see, I don't know too close or not, but I've got um, the rest of Joe Hill's catalog. And I have like two hardcovers of King left that I haven't, uh, that I've read, but only owned in paperback. So I'm rereading them in hardcovers. That would be Christine and his nonfiction um, book called Dance Macabre which is kind of like his survey of the horror genre. So once those two King books are gone, um, I'll pull stuff off the shelves because there's plenty there that I want to reread. My plan is once all of the Joe Hill books are read, I will probably alternate them with, I have several Harlan Ellison um, books because I picked up a bunch of his that I didn't own after he passed in 2018. Probably going to alternate with those for a little while, and there's plenty of other books that I want to read or I'm interested in or stuff that I can find. But I'm going to alternate with King and reread a lot of stuff that I haven't read in 30 
plus years. So I'm even toying with uh, taking on the Dark Tower again, even just the first four books, because those are really the best. I, I'm not going to reread the entire thing, but I'm thinking about doing the first four books again. We'll see where that goes, but that's that's down the road. So, uh, yeah, Thinner and Full Dark No Stars are both great uh, King books. Um, even for first-time readers, they'll probably be okay, I would think. You know, there's really no connection like a lot of his earlier stuff had to the Dark Tower or anything like that. They're pretty standalone. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, pretty enjoyable stuff. It's kind of where I've been. Told you where I'm kind of going with this. And every so often, as I complete a couple of books, I'll come in here and tell you about them. A little bit, at least. So, thank you all for watching. Uh, it's your boy Jeff. Just past the 16-minute mark. I'm going to sign off. Peace, everyone, and I will see you again soon.